Good morning, or is it afternoon yet? <laughs> um, what I want to do today is introduce you to a new technology that we had the opportunity to um, develop on this project as part of the uh, Lotte World Tower team. Um, and the way I'm going to do that uh, is have a brief uh, look at the uh, existing technology and then move into the, the case study that we did on the Lotte World. So to look at some examples of, of solar reflectivity, obviously when you have a dense uh, collection of buildings, you're going to get a lot of uh, complicated reflections and performance. Um, some projects that have had some notable reflectivity issues, um, Walt Disney in Los Angeles and the Vidar in, in Vegas. Um, just to, uh, to show you, you know, there can be issues at street level while you're driving, um, pedestrian issues, uh, neighboring buildings can have uh, situations with reflectivity that can cause a concern. Some of these patterns are unusual. Um, and then, you, you know, you have this uh, sort of progression of towers in Barcelona. Maybe this is not a problem. Maybe this is <laughs> an aesthetic uh, uh, attraction. So um, what we found uh, studying reflectivity is that it, there are um, a number of issues that have to be thought about. This is a, a plan view of uh, some iconic towers in, in Dallas, Texas, built in the 60s. And you can see um, on the, uh, this is a major highway in Dallas, and, and this is a, re a reflection across the highway. But you also see some reflections, uh, this bifurcation because of the shape of this tower, re reflections going the opposite direction at the same time. This is, this is the uh, elevation of that tower, so it's that re very reflective gold glass from the 60s. Um, you can see how it uh, hits the parking garages and, and as the sun progresses around it actually uh, comes across the highway here. You know, after you come through a dark area, then you get surprised by this glare uh, at some locations. Um, in our industry, uh, it seems like uh, most of the uh, investigation has been with uh, light coming into the building and uh, energy studies on uh, heat, heat gain. And um, so there really haven't been uh, a lot of uh, issues that have developed from reflectivity. Uh, you know, obviously physical things such as louvers, resolets, solar screens are the attempt to not necessarily reduce reflectivity, but to control the, the light coming into the building. Just a simple definition to make sure you know we're talking about the return of light, heat, or sound after striking a surface. Um, and in case you didn't uh, attend that physics class where they talked about optics, um, the angle of incidence equal and opposite to the angle of reflection. So when you have, have light striking a surface, you can uh, geometrically uh, predict which way the reflection is going to go. All objects uh, produce reflection and you know some of the parameters are listed there. Uh, orientation and color obviously. Um, the fundamental relationship that, that you need to uh, uh, establish is this heliocentric um, relationship between the sun and the earth and the, uh, the, as, it re as the earth revolves around the sun you have these different uh, equinox or solstice positions that are important. Um, in order to reduce the scope of all the light in the solar system, uh, we switch to a project-centric uh, relationship where we um, now put the, the project at the center of our investigation and have the sun revolve around altitude and azimuth positions. So this is the typical um, solar tracking map that you may have seen before. Usually you, um, you put the project at the center of this map, orient it to north, and then this is a plan view of the track of the sun as it goes across the project site. That would be at the, uh, at the, um, the equinox, I'm sorry, the summer solstice, and here the equinoxes 
and then uh, you know sunrise here in the east, sunset at the winter. Um, and then this is a three-dimensional image of how that how you track the sun as it arcs across the location in the project. So what what are the issues that happen um, when you have uh, close buildings or when you have reentrant corners? You can develop um, you know some intense microclimates. Um, uh, like we said before, you can have some issues with your neighbors. You have glare on highways, or you can have discomfort for pedestrians. You know this is actually the entrance to our office building in Dallas, and. Uh, you know, we had record heat this year, and, and I, <laughs> I can tell you when you walked out and hit that uh, sidewalk, you didn't want to hang around very long. Um, it, you can also get um, a lead point for innovation and technology by, by studying this reflectivity issue because it's not well uh, documented. It's a fairly uh, new uh, technology. There's lack of criteria is what we found. There, there are a few uh, municipalities that will have a, a, a brief uh, limit on reflectivity, but uh, there really isn't anything codified that we've we found that was satisfactory. Part of that problem is, I believe, because the, uh, the measurement of reflectivity is subjective. You know, it depends on how we receive that light. You know, age, eye color, eyewear, uh, like we talked about contrast coming out of, from dark to light, how you perceive that. Um, even, a, you know, the eyebrow can, can help protect uh, receiving that kind of light. So really what we want to, what we want to focus on for the, for the building issues are uh, how do we avoid disability glare? Um, direct glare and reflective glare, they're going to you know, exist as long as the sun is shining. So really what we want to avoid is, to do, is that disability glare. So what are the tools that we have to do that? Well, we were thinking about uh, you know, how do you compare, how do you know when you have a problem, and, and we had a hard time finding anything. So we developed this chart uh, just as a comparison of uh, various light sources. Cloudy sky is uh, pegged at 2,000 candelas per meter square. Uh, light from the, from the moon, 2,500. A clear sky is 8,000. Um, the, uh, the issue where there was a problem on the Vidara was 9,000. A fluorescent bulb puts out 11,000. Uh, the Walt Disney Concert Hall issue was a result of 18,000 candelas per square meter. But you know, an incandescent light bulb is is more intense than that uh, because it's obviously not not spread over a big area. Um, same thing with a candle. This surprised me. A candle has two thousand candelas. It's much more intense than a than a uh, a light bulb. And then a sunset at six hundred thousand, and if you stare uh, directly at the sun at noon, at one point six million. So. Um, we had this chart just to see where, where do architectural projects land in this kind of uh, relative intensity. Um, like I mentioned, the Vidara, this is um, not what you want to see with your project guests left with burns caused by building design. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, after the problem occurred, it was obviously why it, was obvious why it occurred. You had this, this concave uh, reflective uh, surface and the sunlight, uh, you know, was beamed down onto the pool deck. So what are the tools you have to, to try to avoid that? Uh, you know, the most obvious issue is the material and the reflectivity of the material. So you, um, you go to your uh, glass uh, product chart and there is a column there for reflectance and the visible light. This is what's bounced off back you know, onto your neighbors. You have a choice of uh, various levels of reflectivity. Um, there are some modeling tools that are out there now. This is Ecotech, um, and this was, uh, if you modeled Vidara on Ecotech, it would show you the path of where the, the light would be reflected. This is, uh, this is the new technology that, 
that we want to introduce today. This is um, a model that uses computational fluid dynamics to trace the rays, and it actually accumulates the rays that happen at one location. So this is a, uh, a different uh, level of quality of data that will help uh, inform where there might be some issues. So you can see we, we reproduced where this hot spot at the pool deck was. So a comparison of the, of the existing technology, this is the, the, the plans of uh, reflected rays that you get from an Ecotech model. It shows you location, but it doesn't show you intensity. And this is the, uh, the software that, that we're using now that has uh, a scale that shows intensity. Just another comparison on Ecotech versus this uh, newer technology. So what are some of the things you can do as architects? Uh, you can play with this uh, technology. If the Vidar was built in the southern hemisphere, well, you would get a different result. Obviously, the, um, the convex surface would, would distribute the, uh, the rays instead of concentrating them. What if you rotated the building? It's a simple thing to do. You could move the, uh, that focus off of the pool deck and onto somebody's car in the parking lot. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a, a good thing. But um, anyway, uh, here is our experience on what happened with the, the Lote World Tower. Um, you've seen some of the unique features presented by the earlier speakers. Um, what, what really uh, surprised us was was the behavior that happened at these uh, corners that, that uh, open up. Um, one of the issues uh, that we had to decide was, were we going to include these fins in our model? And you can see when you have low uh, angles of incidence, the, uh, the fin would block the reflection. But at uh, high angles of incidence or normal, uh, the fins would not block those rays. So we took a what we call a worst case scenario and, and we did not include these fins in our model. But we did have the uh, these these column features in the model and you can see when the when the rays are aligned at this column there's this bifurcation of the reflection and uh, that that was something that kind of surprised us. So here's the uh, the scale model of the project, the tower, and then this is the, uh, the rendering of the computer image of that model. Now we had to make some simplifications in order to get this in the computer and handle the data that's produced by this uh, fluid dynamics program. So we have a, a domain that's a hemisphere, and uh, the radius of this hemisphere is is two times the, the height of that tower. And uh, some of the other limitations we have, we're only going to look at um, spe uh, specular reflection. We're not looking at diffuse reflection. And we're not going to track rebound. We're only, we're only going to track the first bounce of the ray. Um, another issue we found out with our model is once you get around the, the boundary edges, the data isn't any good, so we've got to keep your model close to the center. We also um, don't simulate clouds, so again, it's a, a worst case scenario. The data we're going to get is, you know, the upper limit of the, of the situation. Another issue, you've got to um, make sure uh, when you're looking at times of day, you don't have daylight savings in your uh, uh, category of, of times of day. Part of the issue is trying to limit how many studies you do. Um, so one of the things we did to try to uh, reduce the amount of data again was look at how much variation is there from day to day with the, with the, uh, the sun's altitude. So you have this plot over the year. It goes from 30 degrees to 75 degrees. But as you look day by day at noontime in October, there's only half a degree difference per day. So, 
So we didn't think that we had to look at every day of the month of the year. This is um, kind of a boring slide. This was uh, just shows how we uh, sort of took the data in three phases. The white bars would be our first guess at uh, what might be a critical time. And then uh, the, uh, I think the orange bars were next, sort of our second step. And then after we thought we had a problem, we did the green bars. So it sort of homed in on where the issues were as we looked at our results. So you can see, like the uh, summer solstice got a lot of attention. This was, um, again, this is the computer model of the site. These are some of the um, important projects that we wanted to, to look at. Uh, important uh, structures, the roadway and some of the taller buildings, the, uh, the Lote World project. And this is how we, um, we summarized our output. We had all those different buildings from those arrows listed, and we had the different months that we looked at. And uh, we came up with this sort of go, no-go uh, criteria. And what we said was, if the reflectivity was less than what the sun puts out normally, we said, well, that, we're not interested in that. That's a daily occurrence. This building sees the glare from the sunlight every day, so that's not a problem. What we wanted to look at is when the accumulation of the intensities was higher than what the sun would put out on that surface. So we marked that with red. And you can see, um, let's see, this is the roadway, had a number of months where it was consistently higher than typical day, the, the uh, radiance from the sun coming to that location. So this helped us uh, focus in on where there might be some issues. Um, just to give you an idea of how many uh, rays we're tracing each model, we inject 500,000 rays and trace those. And we did uh, 200 simulations. So if each ray was a bottle of beer, um, you'd have almost 100,000, 100 million bottles of beer would be each ray. So how do, we, how do we do this? Like I said, you inject these rays into the model 500,000 at a time. You strike your, uh, your tower that you're interested in. So you collect that and then you bounce those based on that uh, optical formula. So this is what uh, that looks like at the winter solstice at four o'clock in the afternoon. So you can see the rays are, are at a low incident, so they're traveling a long way away from the building. This is the, uh, the CFD image of what we call a ray curtain. Um, so this is when a ray is passing through this cell in space and time. That's the collection of, of that energy that's going on. And then this is what the output looks like. Wow. Um, I'm going to hurry up here. These are just static images that show how the reflection uh, plays around the site. And uh, you can see some of these areas have some uh, reflections that, that get up there. But remember what this, this scale is a dimensionless scale for, um, for the luminosity. And at one, it would mean that's what the, the regular sunlight does. So we're saying okay, this guy is getting 2.8 times the normal sunlight on his building. How do you deal with that? Well, the, the reflectivity coefficient of the glass is 33%, so you can divide this number by three, and you're less than, than one. So you have a, perhaps an issue here, it's transient, but it's not any worse than, the, than normal sunlight. Um, I think I have some some videos that I'd like to show you that just step through. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the, uh, the patterns, again, at the summer solstice, stepping at 20 um, or five minute increments around the site. And you can see how you get this uh, sort of bifurcation of ref reflected rays because of the geometry.
This next one, um, let's see, is, is the winter solstice. And you can see how much, how much further out the, uh, uh, the pattern is because of the low incident angle striking the building. And I think this is our last one. This is, uh, this was just at noon for every month of the year. So what does that reflectivity look like? So you can see the, the rays are, are concentrated much closer to the base of the building because at noon time, you know, your, your maximum altitude. And, uh, y you know, there are some canopies that the architect has included to, to really mollify those effects. So again, those were the, the primary uh, features that we looked at around the project. And this is, uh, this is where Lote World Tower ended up with a figure of about um, 3,000. So we, we thought that was a pretty successful conclusion. Um, you know, the only thing I would change was um, if you're going to use this kind of tool, you need to use it early on in the design, maybe in the schematic design phase, because your opportunity to rotate, if, if you have an issue, your opportunities to rotate the building on the site or change the geometry obviously diminish as the, as the project develops. So anyway, thank you for your attention. Charles, thank you very much. We're going to move on to the last uh, speaker. And again, if you have questions, please, please see Charles a afterward. Um, so, uh, so in the interest of time, if we could have the last speaker, um, and Mr. Kim. Yeah.